Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this session of the Business Agility Institute's Emerging from the Crisis Conference. It's a pleasure to be here for General Jacoby and myself. The topic of agility is obviously near and dear to our hearts as we spent quite a number of years thinking about it and uh, describing it in our new book, Agility. So when we started thinking about agility, we thought about the biggest task facing boards and executives uh, around the world, across financial sector, across other industries. And we thought that one of the biggest challenges that everybody is facing right now is the ability to navigate disruption and uncertainty. And of course, the pandemic brought this to bear in, a, in entirely new ways. But even before then, when we looked at our environment, we thought, that it was fraught with volatility, uncertainty, and the need to truly understand how to navigate change consistently and repeatedly. So when we thought about this environment in which all of our organizations operate, we thought that first and foremost, it's the environment of accelerating change driven by the fourth industrial revolution, where every industry in every country is disrupted in some shape or form. But we also realized that it was a much broader uh, issue because this environment of accelerating change in technology was surrounded by geopolitical conflict, societal changes, uh, multipolarity uh, in the geopolitical sense. Uh, so so we, we thought deeply about a range of factors that are influencing uh, the environment in which our organizations operate. So when we really dove into the nature of organizational agility and thought of the need to create a comprehensive theory of it, we were faced with the environment where agility became a buzzword, apart from the world of agile where it has very concrete meanings in project management and new product development. When you talk to boards and executives on a macro level about the agility of their companies in general, we were faced with intellectual confusion about what agility really meant, what it took to achieve it, and what the difference was between agility and other qualities like speed or adaptability or resilience. There wasn't even a consensus about whether agility is an inborn quality, something that you're born in as an individual or organization, or is it something that can be deliberately acquired and achieved? And of course, we believed in the latter. So we really needed to clarify this entire state of affairs and really think deeply about defining agility um, formally and then deconstructing it and operationalizing it so that any organization can assess how agile it is in the broadest sense and then create a plan on how to become more agile. We, we really came to the conclusion that it's important and more urgent now to make sure that when senior leaders are discussing the ways and how to deal with the increasing complexity, uncertainty, and how to navigate the unknown, they really need to be understood through the width and depth of the organization. They need to be understandable to the edge of the organization. It's in contact with the competitive environment, you know, every second of the day. And so it no longer sufficed to use a buzzword that was subject to multiple interpretations as it spiraled down either the chain of command or through the silos of your organization. So um, it, it really uh, became important to nail it down and to propose a, a definition and a theory. And as Leo said, to also talk to it in terms of the practice of agility, which is really uh, we we are committed to this idea that it is achievable and it is uh, necessary uh, to be competitive in today's world. So we defined agility as the organizational capacity to effectively detect, assess, and respond to environmental changes in ways that are purposeful, decisive, and grounded in the will to win. And as you can see from the very definition, it applies to both crises like the one that we're experiencing now, as well as slow moving events like adaptations to completely different societal regimes or government structures or 
technology. Um, there are two different kinds of agility that we identified, and it was our belief that agile organizations must possess both. The first is the strategic agility, which is the purview of boards of directors and executive teams, the ability to detect, assess, and respond to major changes in environments through adjustments in business models, organizational structures, human capital, um, and balance sheets. The second form is tactical agility, which is the ability of the entire organization to overcome challenges, capture opportunities, take smart risks on their own organizational levels when they clearly understand the overall purpose and strategy of the organization. From that viewpoint, the common approaches that use Agile that was originally inspired by software development and then later applied to organizations is a special form of tactical agility that fo focuses on teams and focuses on specific applications like project management and uh, new product development. But we advocated a much broader form of both strategic and tactical agility in the belief that the entire organization must be involved in this process of detection, assessment, and response when it comes to both strategic and tactical challenges facing any organization. Uh, we really believe that uh, there's important linkages between strategic and tactical agility. Uh, really, it's a two-way street of one empowering the other. When the edge is empowered uh, to be agile, uh, where they're in contact with a competitive environment, whether it's military or business, um, then, then the purpose of the organization and the senior leadership team is being accomplished. And they're also being informed by the realities at the edge of the organization. And likewise, of course, that strategic agility is necessary to set the true north and uh, create the setting, which we'll talk about later, that allows an entire organization uh, to be agile. So uh, we, are, we separate the two in order to clarify uh, things that in the past have been uh, considered maybe adaptable or flexible or uh, not necessarily related to agile, or maybe they are agile and not necessarily related to the strategic purpose of the organization. We really see it as uh, two essential components of a single whole of agility. In our framework, this entire process of agility, the process of detecting, assessing, and responding to unexpected environmental changes rests on a certain number of very special uh, kinds of knowledge and kinds of organizational capabilities. Um, and and we, we describe them as three pillars of agility, which are risk intelligence, decisiveness, and the ability to command the entire arsenal of tools uh, in implementing strategy, which we call in execution dexterity. Risk intelligence is one of the areas that I've devoted most of my career to, uh, which is the strategic, proactive, forward-looking reincarnation of risk management as a fully-blown discipline that has emerged in finance and in business over the past 30 years. Um, risk management has always been more of a policing function, more of a backward looking function. By redefining it as risk intelligence, we really moved it into the realm of strategy and uh, the realm of strategic decision making by boards and executives. We defined risk intelligence a number of years ago as the organizational ability to think holistically about risk and uncertainty speak a common language and use forward-looking tools in making better decisions. Yeah, and I think this is where Leo and I had our greatest amount of common ground uh, when we first got started was Leo's idea of risk intelligence. And uh, really it's very, very similar to what the military has for years called its intelligence cycle. And this idea that um, we conduct uh, intel-driven operations. And it really is the basis of this idea that a thorough and complete uh, understanding of the environment and a constant of uh, what we call fighting for intelligence to uh, stay up to date on the environment is really the key to ultimate success. And it's also the key to not being a victim of uncertainty 
or the fog and friction that we think is the nature of all competitive environments. So uh, risk intelligence is very congenial to what the, the military and our current intelligence community, how they think about uh, collecting and uh, processing and then disseminating uh, intelligence. And it, it's a bigger picture than just statistical analysis of, of really the, the, the things that are possible to know and measure that have been traditionally the basis of uh, formulating risk. And, and I think the military has, uh, has a lot to gain by this idea of thinking through the whole relationship between risk and its intelligence cycle. When we faced with environments of this level of volatility, disruption and uncertainty, you sort of have to go back to the basic, basics and really think deeply about the nature of the environments and then what it takes to operate in those. So um, the theory of war by Clausewitz that really digs deeply about the, into the informational ambiguity of these environments as well as the role of chance and uncertainty was absolutely critical. The role, um, the modern study of complex adaptive systems was truly additive uh, to this process. And then this notion that even when our environment seemed to be balanced, it takes one little push, be it pandemics or riots in the United States, uh, to put it, push it into a state of complete disequilibrium, an entirely new kind of operational environment um, was key to understanding how to define agility. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, uh, and, and just make sure that I've been clear on that um, phrase that I used, uh, fight for intelligence and what we've uh, decided to call in the book, the fight for risk intelligence. What we mean by that in the military is we resource it. It's not something that we expect the the uh, senior leaders to, you know, have the Economist and Foreign Affairs and a bunch of other magazines st stacked up on the nightstand. It, it is a resourced, deliberate attempt to uh, thoroughly uh, define our interests in the environment and to uh, look at, at uh, possible uncertainties that would affect our mission and our strategy, and then put resources against uh, gaining knowledge that eventually becomes understanding, and then being sure that that's pushed down and proliferated uh, throughout the organization and that the organization it itself feels part of the process of being, uh, you know, completely involved in this fight for risk intelligence themselves. Now, we used to have this saying that uh, every soldier on the battlefield is a collector uh, because really at the edge is where uh, some, you get some of your real nuggets. But um, it, it is you know, fundamental to this idea of agility, uh, just like a, a pro football team is going to spend most of the week before a game watching tape of the uh, – of their adversaries and what what their trends are and what they what they've been doing uh, and and try to uh, form game plans around it. Uh, this fight for risk intelligence is really fundamental to our concept of both strategic and tactical agility. This entire concept of fighting for risk intelligence is a perfect transition uh, uh, to what we call the agility process, which is a multi pronged. Uh, recurring, ongoing process of detection assessment in response to environmental changes, you will see two different sides to it. One is tactical. It's where we are executing on the strategy, we're making tactical decisions, and we're receiving new signals from the environment about the progress of what we're doing ourselves, what we're measuring, how we're doing, as well as changes in the environment. And then we iterating and improving um, on the execution of the strategy. Again, that's very consistent with the world of Agile uh, and how it was originally done in software and then uh, applied to teams. But there are other much more consequential, much more powerful forms of this process which uh, fall into the realm of strategic agility. That's where you detect major changes in the environment and continuously change your strategy, your risk appetite, your organizational structures, your products, services, business models to respond uh, to what's happening in the environment. But sometimes 
changes in the environment are so profound that you may need to revisit the entire purpose, overarching purpose of the organization and decide whether it's still viable in the current environment. So there are different cycles of it, and some of them, as we described, are the purview of boards and executive teams, and some must live throughout the organization. One of the, one of the key uh, points of discussion that we wanted to raise in this entire debate on agility is to what extent having it be limited to teams is sufficient, or to which extent the entire organization must be involved in this process, because at the very edges of it is where knowledge is gained, uh, where you understand changes in the environment, and where some of the most interesting innovations and improvisations occur. Um, so we, we created almost a whole new language describing the attributes of leadership and attributes of cultures, like the ability to cohere around both strategic and moral true norms, the culture of trust, accountability, empowerment. And of course, all of this cascades into these three essential competencies like risk intelligence, decisiveness, and execution dexterity. And that's what shapes agility, not as a once a year uh, part of the strategic process, but as an ongoing organic state of, a state of being for the whole organization. We deliberately uh, told ourselves we're not going to write a leadership book. We're not going to write a business book. We're, we're going to, or a management book. We're going to write a book about agility. But it jumps out at you throughout uh, the book, the, cur the critical role that leadership plays, not just at the highest level, but throughout uh, the organization, wherever accountability for the uh, purpose and uh, uh, execution and decisiveness of the organization is required. And so um, this whole idea is that it's not just in, if you're really going to be successful, if you're really going to dominate, if you're really gonna seize opportunities, uh, you know, in an era of disruption, then uh, there really has to be consistent thinking through the organization and across the organization about what the purpose of the organization is, what's the end state we're trying to achieve, what are the key tasks, what, what is the empowerment that allows for initiative and creativity, and where must there be some boundaries on, on initiative, uh, depending on the type of business you're in or the nature of the environment you're in. And, and that's why we called it an agility setting. So what is the cultural organizational setting that, that allows uh, uh, an organization to truly be agile and truly be uh, uh, on, on the side of uh, keep penetrating the fog and friction, uh, capturing opportunities and avoiding uh, some of the uh, worst parts of the crises like we've seen recently. So to us, agility is an overarching quality. It, uh, it applies both to slow moving uh, environmental changes like the fourth industrial revolution and it applies to acute crises like what we're facing today so when we talk to to boards of directors and executive teams around the world across different sectors and industries we we, we try to conceptualize this current crisis in terms of three distinct categories of factors that matter one is the realm of risk we we still have public health risks facing our societies. We have a wide range of economic outcomes. It's very important for companies to truly conceptualize the entire range of outcomes, and that's part of planning, that's part of risk intelligence, and it's part of fighting for risk intelligence because we still don't know the exact path of the global recession, and we don't quite know the path of the eventual recovery. So actively fighting for risk intelligence and conceptualizing how, how it lives within the context of the wide range of scenarios that we can visualize is very important. And that's something that some companies are doing really well and some companies are not necessarily preparing for. The second category is a range of uncertainty. We could have profound societal and environmental change coming out of this pandemic. 
the future of work and learning can profoundly change. You could have uh, dramatic changes in consumer behaviors and societal norms. You could have the rise of populism and nationalism for reasons that are now quite obvious. And of course, as in the very first slide that we showed, uh, all of this lives in a much broader environment of geopolitical conflict and geopolitical competition that seems to be intensifying uh, in the middle of this pandemic. So this is the goal of every leadership team, every organization to truly conceptualize this entire set of factors, understand how exposed you are to them, how prepared you are to them, and then create both the capabilities and the cultural and leadership setting that will enable you to do that. You know, if you look at that chart, uh, it's a very simple chart, but uh, it can sound daunting as you're thinking about all the things that you really need to do to, to become agile, but really many organizations uh, have uh, bits and pieces and components of it that have existed in their organizations. And uh, really the question is, how far do I need to push up to the upper right quadrant of agility to uh, not be a victim of the environment, but to shape the environment? Uh, how do I push our organization sufficiently up into that agility uh, quarter in, in order to uh, uh, not just survive disruption, but find opportunities in disruption? And those are questions that we, we think that we can help uh, leaders and organizations uh, think about and, and come up with solutions for uh, what's best for their organization in order to achieve the level of agility they need for their environment. But one of the, one of the key uh, choices that uh, organizations have to make, whether they're military, governmental, business, is um, how do we make this part uh, uh, of an organic um, nature of their organization. It's not just something that you do at an offsite. You really, you have to develop the capabilities and resource the capabilities for planning, for leader development, for risk intelligence, that are, is a continuous cycle and it's not linear. It's not, I'm gonna accomplish it today and then I'll work on it later and then we'll check on it somewhere down the road. It's, it's part of the life cycle of an organization if you want to achieve what we are we think is necessary. And you have to understand the relationships between the risks you take. We talk a lot about that in the book, but look at the relationships between the risks, the large risks and uncertainties we still face with uh, COVID-19, with internal political disruption, with economic disruption, and with geopolitical disruption. They're all, all those risks are interacting with each other right now. And it really requires thoughtful, penetrating, resourced efforts uh, to understand those risks and to understand how to uh, be prepared in ways that allow you to uh, shape how your organization uh, wins in those types of environments. So it's been a pleasure presenting um, all of this to, to you. We hope you found it useful. We look forward to the live portion of it. And um, I think the encouraging part is that um, the current events are reconfirming the need for defining agility in this broadest overarching way. And there is now an operational roadmap of what concretely we can do today to navigate this environment. So thank you very much for your attention and we look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you.